Hey guys, how you doing? Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to finally data log the S197 Mustang. I've never owned a vehicle that has had a bone stock tune that has this many miles. The car has over 70,000 miles and I thought to myself, this is a good opportunity to show you the, what the tune does when it has 87 octane because I suspect that the car has 87 octane in the tank. So I want to make sure that, you know, I data log it before I, you know, do any modifications, do any tuning to the car or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and check out a couple of things that I have to get. I have to get the computer, I have to get an N-gauge cable. Uh, the, the things are crazy, I have to get an N-gauge cable. Uh, probably gonna get um, a newer cable because there's a couple of cables that I have on the N-gauge. There's this cable that I bought from um, uh, Tuning Something. It's like a, a place where you can literally buy an N-gauge cable and you know, you can, use the old n-gauges even though right now you're not really getting uh, a lot of support for the n-gauges because they're gone so i'm gonna do that gather some of the things and get over to where i need to go oh it's weird i've gone in i've gone in four rooms looking for things it's kind of hard to go into four rooms in a one bedroom oh, there's a hallway there's a there's a living room there's a kitchen there's, it's weird for, for being about one bedroom. You can lose a lot of stuff here. Okay, let's get over to the car and data log it and see what's, uh, what's the deal with the stock tune and what it does with 87 octane and then when you fill up with 93 octane. Alrighty. And the S197, what I'm going to do is uh, I like data logging at night because there's a lot less traffic, a lot less BS you got to deal with. I got to change these colors. I don't drive, I haven't driven this car at night much and uh, got purple like purple ambient lighting and I got to change that in the uh, color display so what I'm gonna do and the goal for today is this get some data logs on it I finally got the tank down to under a half tank actually just under a half tank okay so now that it's under a half tank and has 72,000 miles I'm gonna data log it I'm gonna stick the end gauge in it on the stock tune I know it has the ABS issue still and I'm gonna see if the knock sensors are not happy. If the knock sensors are not happy, I will go ahead and fill up with Shell 93 octane from my area, drive it for a little bit so it mixes, and then see what happens with the exact same tune, no changes, but I'm gonna data log to see what the knock sensors do. So let me change this, let me change this color. This is just stupid. Uh, blue? Ice blue? No, 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 no. Gauge color. Is it like blue, blue? Like regular blue? There you go. And then there's a halo color, the outside. See that outside halo? That has can change too. So halo light, you can have it on or off. I'll leave it on. And I have a halo color to blue. Just all blue. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Maybe now I see why it's uh, weird. Let's have the halo light off. Oh, no, that's fucking weird. So uh, halo light on. Okay, we'll leave it like that. And the ambient color, let's change that. So let's go back, ambient light, ambient color, blue. And we're done, everything is blue, everything is blue, love it. All right, let's get out there on the road, let's data log the stock tune, do some drive, of, one long log, driving, do a watt pull in third gear, let's pull over, look at the data log, and see what the stock tune is doing with 87 octane in the tank. Okay, let me get the OBD2 connected. Where is it? Come on, baby. Come on. There we go. Let's get the end gauge popping. Oh, yes. Got the custom splash screen. Badass shit. So, diagnostics. Data logging. And it should have already... Oh, we had a bunch of configs in here, but the R12 or R11 seemed to be the best one. R11. And I don't need fuel pressure, so boom. And again, you could just start logging. Normal, always. You could just start logging. It doesn't have to... You don't have to log the event. Just go out and do your data log. And I'm just going to let it run, put it away, get to my spot, do my hit, and be done with it. So it's logging. So let me put this away somewhere nice and do my logs. So as I'm leaving the complex, I'll show that in the data log. And I'm going to just get into it. I'm not what. What I'm doing is I'm trying to induce low RPM, high load. So basically like a condition where it's going to downshift. And that's where it's probably going to have some knock sensor activity and that felt actually pretty good so I'm hoping that the 87 octane um, shows up at least one degree or two of knock and it, it typically when it happens is when you're kind of accelerating but I'm not gonna do anything odd I'm not gonna look 
to make a knock uh, event happen, I'm mostly going to just drive it like you would and then ask you to do a data log. And in that data log, I will see if the 87 octane, two things. It can either only cap the timing at like 24 degrees and not let it add any timing. Or if the octane is really bad, it'll actually pull timing. Meaning, if, if the car has a frequency of detonation being picked up by the knock sensors, then we can go ahead and say, okay, that means the fuel quality is not great. And the, if it's commanding 25, but it's knocking back one or two, then that's a detonation event. If it's okay quality, like 89 or 91 octane, it won't knock, but it also won't let the knock sensors add timing. Let me floor it here. Okay, so trying to see if in the data log any knock sensor activity comes up. I'm not gonna do any draggy stuff. All I'm trying to do today is induce some kind of knock sensor event or at least data log, and I am data logging. I'm just leaving it by the, by the thing here. And then I'll pull over, review a log, and uh, talk about it with you guys. So let me get a little wider angle, do more wall pulls. Right there, I heard a <laughs> Slow down. Okay, that's it, nothing crazy. Let me go, pull over, look at the data log, and see that what I heard on that last wall pull if the knock sensors went off, because it was audible to me. So lovely, the battery decided to quit working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an extended data log because if I'm gonna go fill up on shell 93. I still have under a quarter, actually under half a tank. So data logging, boom, normal. So I'm gonna data log. On the way to data log, I'm gonna do a bunch of wall pulls and just kind of drive like normal and just kind of monitor the knock and then fill up with shell, slosh it around and then go home, plug this in because apparently the battery died and go ahead and look at the before and after log. So let this guy log, this is log. 45 you see right there for those of you that still don't understand how this works that's log 45 so when i look at log 45 that's the 87 octane log so presumably log 46 would be the uh 93 log so let me go out and do some hits and stuff and uh fill up with shell 93 from a busy shell and then we'll review both logs when i get home Okay, I've been driving a while now, and uh, there's a shell that's pretty busy here next to a strip club uh, in West Palm. I forget the name of the strip club. It's a gentleman's club. It's called the what? Ultra? Ultra? I don't know. Gentleman's Club. Ultra. And this um, shell is pretty busy during the day, but at night, not so much. So I've uh, gotten it down to just at about a quarter gonna go in here fill up absolutely fill up not throw five gallons like half of you guys do absolutely fill up uh what's what's the price 480 fucking nine. Oh wow no wonder sheesh all right well i guess it costs money to make a video so let me fill up and i'm gonna reset the trip odometer perfect so i'm gonna drive it about 20 miles let the 93 mix with the rest in there let me see how much, uh, how many gallons we get in it uh, based on what's going on right now. I don't know why the hell they ask you 15 questions. I just want to get my fucking gas, bro. Oh, fuck. Really, bro? All right. So, 93. Yes, it's going to be like a $60 fill up. Car looks good, you know? Car looks good under the lights, you know? Let me uh, take the obligatory shot while it fills up. And it's dirty. It's rained and stuff. But, you know, that's the cool thing about gray. Wow. You know, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm very happy with this purchase. Extremely happy with this purchase. So nothing wrong with this car. The more you look at it, the more you appreciate it. And, you know, I didn't really appreciate the car initially. I was just like, OK, it's just a great car. But at nighttime with the good lighting that. Oh, man, this camera. Let me see. Eh, it's still there. The lighting that these. uh gas stations have at night is pretty perfect so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cruise cl clematis a little bit the car's not terrible looking so i'm gonna uh fill it up cruise clematis get about 20 to 30 miles in it then data log again after i data log again i'll make sure that you know hopefully it shows a difference in knock sensor readings from the fuel that was in there i did have a quarter tank left of 87 so i'm hoping that there's enough 
in the 10 plus gallons that I'm going to put in there to dilute what's left in there from the 87 that was left over from the dealership. Hey, and then we'll be able to get you some data. All right, let's go to Clematis. trip around downtown now this is something that you guys have to take note of I've been driving for 20 minutes how many gallons do you think I've gone through so every single time I tell you guys to let it mix let it mix let it mix let it mix what does that mean when you go well I took I took it for a 20 minute drive well that's all I've used up in 22 minutes I've driven six miles point half a gallon I've used a half a gallon is that enough to mix out the 87 with the 93 and make it like a 91 or something who knows now let's use the e85 as an example do you think that's enough let's say you had an eighth of a tank of pump of pump gas left in it and then you filled up with e85 do you think that's enough to dilute the remaining pump gas in it no when i say go for a long drive go for a long drive so i'm gonna go for another couple miles then i'll start data logging and the next thing you'll see is me reviewing both logs at home Alrighty guys here we are reviewing a data log on the computer at home so again we're gonna go ahead and uh open a data log i want a data log actually i want to open a data log and it was the log before last so 45 45 so this is 87 octane the fuel that came uh with the car when i got it delivered from her long chevrolet i suspected it was 87 octane just because the way it sounded as always we deselect all items just to know when your log looks like this you go to the bottom follow the cursor bottom left right here and you said uncheck all items but the only one that's highlighted is rpm so we're going to go ahead and unselect all items now I'm going to highlight knock. That's what I want to see. And anything above zero is positive knock. So since knock is highlighted, this little axis is the knock axis. Anything above this zero right here is positive knock. And right here, right click, drag it, zoom in. That is positive knock. And let's look at the pedal. Went wide open throttle right here. So wide open throttle, the car saw about three degrees of knock according to what I can tell. Yes, so 3.63 degrees of knock. Let's move it somewhere so we can see it really closely. So right here, look at this guy right here. Again, zero negative knock is good. Positive knock is not good. So right here, it's 3.63 uh, degrees of knock. So that means that, let's say, Spark, the car is commanding 15 plus 3. 18 degrees and it said no thank you but again that's not necessarily what's happening the adaptive octane logic it's doing what it's supposed to do so right now this car is seeing only 15 degrees of timing kicking back three degrees according to the knock sensor pid right here okay let's max it out let's see where else it knocked let's get rid of everything and right here these little blips right here this is where i'm i'm suspecting when i'm driving that the rpms go up exactly so when you're just cruising and you're stepping on it you can hear audible detonation you can hear little sounds like marbles so you know something like that and that's what i would hear and this is positive knock positive knock now log 46 if 46 if i'm not mistaken i have not reviewed it yet is 93 octane mixed with the quarter tank or so of um of uh, 87 i suspect that came from her long ford again we're going to highlight the knock pid 
We got a little bit of knock right here, but look at what happens. It's not under any um, acceleration. It seems to be just a blip, a very, very 12 degree throttle angle and a little bit of a blip. And the knock was three. So it this is a very sensitive knock sensor. It wasn't under wide open throttle, but right here is wide open throttle. You understand? So ETC actual, wide open throttle, and look at the knock sensor as compared to the log previous. Negative, negative, it starts to creep up positive, shifts, still negative right there. You see what I mean? So let's highlight the knock PID. It actually starts to knock two degrees at, let's say, 5,600 RPMs. How much spark is it seeing? 20 degrees of timing guys look at that in second gear it's seeing seven or six more degrees of timing from 15 at a similar condition this car is seeing almost 15 degrees wow it's seeing 23 it's seeing from 15 to 23 degrees of timing that's probably 20 horsepower right there so this proves that if you have 93 octane in the tank on a bone stock vehicle, you will see more timing on the bone stock tune. This is why we very much encourage people to run the best fuel possible. Again, we're seeing the knock sensor add a bunch of timing. It did kick back some timing up top, right up here at 5,400 RPMs in third gear, but in second gear in a similar condition than the other car because this is the gear command, second, and the knock in that area is negative the whole time. Let's go back and look at the data log, number 45, that's 80, 87 octane, where we were in second gear at about 6,000 or so RPMs. Max, deselect all items. Let's look at the knock PID, knock PID, High knock here, right click, drag it, right click, drag it. And in second gear, right here, look at here, second gear at about 5,000 RPMs. And then it goes back to second again. So in second gear, 6,000 RPMs, this sucker knocked back three degrees. And look at the timing. The total spark output of that similar condition, which is, you know, spark advanced, whatever, SAFT, that's what Ford calls it. It saw 14 degrees of timing, 5,900 RPMs, second gear, 14 degrees of timing. And on 93 octane, mixed with a little bit of 87, about a quarter tank of 87, it saw in second gear, top of second gear, let's see, 5,800 RPMs, let's go to Savtot, it saw 23 degrees of timing proving once and for all that the adaptive octane logic absolutely can sense how much octane or how good the fuel is in your car bone stock and tuners piggyback off of that and use it to well the good tuners anyway and use it to their advantage so please 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 always run good octane fuel in your vehicles this car saw almost eight more degrees in a similar condition than in on 87 octane and that's probably worth 20 to 25 horsepower and before you say air charge temps helped that previous log, this is log 44, the log I took when I left the complex. Look at air charge temps. This is the 87 octane log. So air charge temps right here are at 91 degrees and look at the knock sensor, what it did when I stepped into it. It knocked back four degrees right here. It knocked back four degrees. Let's go all the way to Savtot. I noticed this after editing, people are gonna say, oh my God, what about the what about the air charge temps? Okay, 90 degree air charge temps, 88 degree air charge temps, it still knocked more uh, than it did on the 91 octane, um, sorry, 93 octane fuel mixed with the quarter tank of about 87. So just wanted to crowbar that in there before people called me out on the air charge temp being better on the previous situation. All right, guys, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later.